Assalamu alaikum. Thanks for watching Hot Conflict. Well, just this last weekend, I traveled to New York. It was quite an experience. I had some business to take up there, and I went there for the weekend. Now, this is the first time I've traveled in maybe two or three years. Traveled anywhere. I'm not talking about leaving the country. I'm talking about going from Houston just to New York. So, how does it feel when a Muslim has to travel? First of all, the paranoia. The first thing I thought of is, I need to travel. Okay? Is that going to be a problem? Am I going to be allowed to travel? Are there going to be any issues? Am I on the no-fly list? Is something going to happen? Should I call the FBI and tell them that I'm going to New York? I mean, after all, we're talking about New York, right? This is New York. Do I have to call the FBI and tell them that I'm going to go to New York? Well, why do I have to call the FBI and tell them I'm going to New York? I'm just a regular person. I'm not a terrorist. I'm not involved in anything. I'm going to travel from Houston, get on a plane, and go to New York. It shouldn't be a problem. All right. I go to Houston. I get on the plane, going through the checkouts, going through all the things, go to get my uh, baggage checked in. Then I go through security. Start getting rid of all your stuff. I had a laptop with me. I didn't realize I had to take my computer out, so that created a whole scene, and, you know, they had to swipe over the computer with little gauze and check to see if there's any chemical residue from the bomb-making factory. Kind of spooky, actually. But anyway, I go through all of that, get on the plane, no incident, try to sleep the whole way there, pretend like I'm not there. No problem at all. Get to New York. New York is strange. I'm there, I'm by myself, I check into a hotel, and everywhere I see, there are people, everywhere, all over the place. I was right downtown on Broadway and 50th, which is right in the heart of all the action, where David Letterman's theater is, the Broadway shows are all there, Mamma Mia, Wicked, there are people all over the place, and the lights, and the action, and so many people, it was really kind of shocking. Now, the funny thing for me was... There were a lot of Muslims. I mean, Muslims everywhere. And you could see, walking up and down the street, men and women who are Muslims. Stores, a lot of Muslim restaurants, a lot of ethnic restaurants, a lot of all kinds of ethnicities. Surprising was, on almost every corner downtown was a hot dog vendor. And as a Muslim, we always really stay away from hot dogs because they're always made of pork and it just makes us feel sick. But every single one of these hot dog vendors either said halal or kosher and so it was clearly marked. In addition to that, they were all Arab guys and they were all selling kebab and falafel and shawarma almost on every corner. It was like a, a Muslim street in the Middle East. Maybe that's why some of the conservative right-wingers are a little bit... <laughs> agitated when they see the amount of immigrants, but I was amazed at how many people of various cultures and different ethnic groups were all over the place. So, I'm going about my business, everything's okay, I get there on a Wednesday night, Thursday, attending meetings, lectures, and then all of a sudden, news breaks out. JFK, airport plot. Ah, oh, great. Paranoia kicks in again. Wait a second, I'm Muslim. I just happen to be in New York. Oh, no. Do I need to call the FBI? Should I call the FBI and tell them that I'm in New York? Wait a second. I'm not involved in anything to do with this. Why should I call the FBI? Wait, should I just call the FBI and tell them, listen, I just want to let you know that I'm here in New York. Because every time I go through a border, I always get the questions. I always get interrogated for five or six hours. Wait a second. If I call the FBI and tell them I'm in New York, that's going to send up some red flags and all of a sudden I'm going to have somebody doing psychological testing to see why I might have called. All right, I'm not going to call the FBI. I'm just going to go about my business and pretend like, hey, this doesn't have anything to do with me. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to do anything. Go about my business. Keep going. By Friday, as I'm walking on Broadway, right downtown, I see tent in the middle of the street and there are Muslims, brothers and sisters, handing out books, handing out Qur'ans, handing out information about Islam and even pamphlets about terrorism and what Islam 
is doing to combat the effort of terrorists and changing the communication and increasing the message. And I was so happy. I was shocked. I was like, there they are! Eureka! I found them! Everybody in the press is saying, where are the mainstream Muslims? Where are the moderate Muslims? Where are the people who are going to express the true meaning of Islam? I found them! Everybody, look, they're there, right on Broadway and 50th, standing on the street, handing out Qur'ans and handing out information about Islam. But there wasn't any press there. There wasn't anybody there. There was barely even anybody taking books, as a matter of fact. I was so happy that I went up to talk to them and said, My name is Salim Siddiqui, I'm from Houston, I'm involved in communication with Muslim, and I'm just so happy to see you. They looked at me like I was a little crazy. But, seriously, I was just so happy to see that there are people trying to make an effort. Well, later on I went and grabbed my camera because I didn't have it with me and ran down there and tried to see if I could get some videotape of them. But, after talking to them, I said, hey, my name is Salim, here's my card, I want to videotape you guys on the street. Videotape us? Uh, who are you? What are you doing? What kind of card is this? Uh, no thank you, we don't need to be videotaped. Paranoia kicks in. And I realized, yeah, they're freaking out. Why would they want some random guy like me to come and videotape them? They don't know who I am. And with the heightened state, with everybody on high alert, everybody's a little bit paranoid. Muslims more than anybody else. How do I know? I'm traveling. I'm in New York. I was more paranoid than they are. But I could understand they wouldn't want to be videotaped. Now, I didn't need their permission. I didn't videotape them because they felt uncomfortable with it. And that's fine. But there are Muslims out there trying to make a difference. And it is hard for us, because no matter what we do, we're always a little bit hesitant that somebody's going to try and misinterpret what we say, or take what we are doing or saying out of context. And then next comes the orange jumpsuit, and you're in a cell saying, No, I'm not a terrorist. Yeah, yeah, right. It's okay. Shut up. Send in the dogs. <laughs> right? So everybody's a little hesitant. We've got to change that. So, what else happened to me? I came back from New York, still again wondering, okay, now I'm coming back. The news died down, the plot was a long time ago, and really they weren't able to do anything, and it was a bunch of people from Guyana, and all of a sudden there's militants spreading all over the place, and there's links with this group and that group. Okay, well, the FBI had it under control. Should I call the FBI and tell them I'm flying back? from New York to Houston? Nah, I don't need to call the FBI. So I go in, I check in on my way back from New York to Houston, and right behind me in line, there's a Sardarji. If you don't know what a Sardarji looks like, he looks kind of like this. See that picture with the turban? That's a Sardarji. They are not Muslims, although they do often get shot at, harassed, and abused for being Muslims. Now, obviously, I'm not condoning that. We don't want to get anybody hurt. So. This guy steps in line right behind me. Even I'm going, great, just what I need. So there's a guy in line on the other side of the uh, checkout going in through another gate, and he's looking at us like, he's staring him down, he's looking at him up and down, and staring at his trip, and I'm going, ah, oh, great, this is all what we need. But people just have to learn to get along and have to learn that there are different religions and cultures and dress and everything doesn't automatically relate to violence. And even me, in my paranoia, I've got to learn to relax. I've got to learn to chill out a little bit. So did anything happen? No, nothing happened. But it is kind of strange that this is what Muslims feel when they travel. It's a very anxious, nervous, uneasy feeling for absolutely no reason at all. Did I call the FBI at any time? No. Thank God. I didn't have a need, and hopefully they weren't looking for me. But it makes me wonder. This is how many Muslims feel. They're just not able to express it and probably haven't told you. They tell me stories of how hard it is to travel sometimes. But is this what freedom is supposed to be? I mean, I wasn't traveling across any borders. I went from Houston to New York. Not going across any borders, not even needing a passport but still felt so uncomfortable just to travel. Is this what freedom and liberty is supposed to mean? Or do we need to make a better effort for all of us so that we feel safer and figure out how to solve the problem? Traveling. The stress. 
hot conflict. Thanks for watching. Sit down,